At St. Gertrude's, a Benedictine abbey south of Berlin, the nuns have elected a new superior, and the cardinal has come to give her the traditional bishop's blessing. We have to find new ways of bringing people into contact with Christ. It isn't enough to say God loves me or it's important to love your neighbor. It has to be expressed concretely. We need to witness to the faith in our lives. Every Christian has to try and live as authentically as possible. I am convinced that people respond to that. In 2011, Rainer Maria Wölki, a 55-year-old bishop from Western Germany, was first appointed Archbishop of Berlin and later elevated by Pope Benedict to the College of Cardinals. The decision surprised many, not least perhaps the new cardinal himself. He found himself suddenly catapulted into a leadership role at a time when the church in Europe was facing daunting challenges and its membership shrinking dramatically. St. Alphonse is one of 25 Catholic schools in the Archbishop's Diocese. Cardinal Wölki has come to celebrate the institution's Golden Jubilee. After Mass, he chats with pupils and teachers. But it's proving rather difficult to break the ice. After posing for several obligatory photos, the Cardinal takes the initiative to move things along. Other occasions are rather more daunting. The German bishop's annual reception in Berlin, for instance, an opportunity for politicians to demonstrate their respect for the Catholic vote and for the bishops to do some valuable networking. As Archbishop of the German capital, it's Wölki's privilege to welcome the guests together with the president of the German Bishops' Conference, Archbishop Robert Solich. <laughs> Clearly, Berlin's new cardinal is still finding his feet. I said from the start that I'm just the city's archbishop. The fact that Berlin is the German capital is irrelevant. And I try to hold to that. But I am aware that the politicians request things of me, and there are expectations. Das politische Berlin mich anfragt und ich auch da eingefordert bin. St. Gertrude's Abbey nestles in a sleepy village on the outskirts of the German capital. The Benedictine nuns here are used to welcoming visitors seeking peace and quiet. But the caller today is none other than the busy Archbishop of Berlin himself, who has come to give the new abbess her symbols of office. Mm -hmm. 
Benedictines elect their superiors, and this time they've chosen a young member of the community, Sister Bernadette. The Cardinal will give her the traditional blessing known as the Episcopal Benediction, confirming her election. Fewer and fewer German Catholics are choosing the monastic life, so this is a special occasion for the Cardinal. Frau Äbtissin. Before conferring his blessing on the new abbess, Cardinal Wölki formally asks her if she is ready to live according to the rule of St. Benedict. If she is ready to lead her community by example, and if she is ready to accept her sister's salvation as her first responsibility. Wollen Sie die Ihnen anvertrauten Schwestern zu To all three questions, the new abbess answers, yes, I am ready. Ihre erste Pflicht ansehen. Ja, ich bin bereit. Monasteries and convents are spiritual beacons in a world that denies the existence of God. Cardinal Wölki would like to see a few more of them in his sprawling diocese. In terms of area, it's the second largest in the country and extends beyond the German capital into the thinly populated federal states of Brandenburg and Mecklenburg-Vorpommern. Less than 10% of the population here is Catholic, and atheism is deeply rooted, the result of decades of communist rule. Of course, that causes me pain. The faith that is the basis of my life and the reason for my becoming a priest means everything to me. And I believe we can give people orientation and help in their lives, a tremendous perspective with the gospel that we proclaim and worship. So, of course, it saddens me. But on the other hand, I see this abbey, this spiritual oasis, and I'm very grateful for this community of about 30 women who are trying to express the essence of the gospel in their lives. The Cardinal visits a class of fourth graders. Sensing that his clerical garb may be intimidating to the children, he makes an effort to put them at their ease. I am a bishop. We are men who are sent, like the apostles, to show other people by our lives that God is alive and that he cares about people. The Cardinal is strongly aware of the importance of education. He himself comes from a humble background. Born in Cologne in 1956, he grew up in a staunchly Catholic family. Our family was deeply religious, well, religious. My parents used to say prayers with the children, so did my grandma who lived with us, and we went to church on Sunday. There was nothing unusual about this, nothing excessive. It was just a normal Catholic upbringing that left its stamp on me. I became an altar boy, and the assistant priest was my role model. The way he lived and how he treated the young people was authentic, and I wanted to be like him. Rainer Maria Wölki may have wanted to remain just a simple parish priest, but the church had other plans. In 2012, Pope Benedict XVI elevated him to the College of Cardinals. Sancti Johannes Maria Vianney, in nomine Patris et Fili et Spiritus Sancti. The German capital was a challenge. 
Whereas the Rhineland is traditionally Catholic, Berlin is home to just 325,000 Catholics, fewer than 10% of the city's residents. But Wölki is not intimidated by this secular society. He sees it as a challenge to bring people in contact with Christ. And the number of Catholics in his diocese is currently growing, as immigrants arrive from Poland, Southern Europe and South America. I like being in Berlin. I like the city because it has a tremendous amount to offer, especially culturally. In that aspect, it's probably unique in Germany. And I like the people, because they received me spontaneously with openness and warmth. Of course, I also know another Berlin, where the glitter and glamour that the tourists see is less evident. There is poverty here, and the gap between rich and poor is constantly growing. That especially affects young people and children. The Cardinal lives in a district viewed by many as a social flashpoint. In his rented accommodation on a busy street, he says he feels at home among the people he is called to serve. His office is located on the building's ground floor. Various diocesan committees meet here every Tuesday. In effect, the archbishop is like a parish priest, only on a larger scale. His first concern is to meet the pastoral needs of the people in his diocese. I think the most important thing is that God created people and that he loves his creation. So he loves human beings. People have dignity because they're created in the image of God. Every person, irrespective of class or color, social situation or background, is precious. And I can encounter something of God in every person. And this person is not heading into a void, but has a goal. And that goal is a life in God and with God. Basically, it is everything we long for existentially. Ultimately, it means happiness and love and acceptance, unconditional acceptance. And we receive it as a gift from God. In the district where the Cardinal lives, a third of the people belong to ethnic minorities. Unemployment is high and the standard of living falls below the national average. But the social mix highlights the ethnic and religious diversity of contemporary Germany. The Cardinal feels at home here. A short distance from his office, there's a church-sponsored cafe that provides help for kids in the district. So, hello. Hello, hello everyone. Today I'm here on my own, without the board members. I was here just two or three weeks ago, but I thought I'd drop by alone this time. Of course, it's nice that you don't just come for anniversary celebrations. 
Anschlag auf Sie vor. Und zwar zum Actually, we wanted to ask you a favor. Dass Sie da vielleicht mal ein Stündchen Zeit yeah. hätten. Do you have any time on St. Joseph's Day on March 17th or thereabouts? 19th. The 19th or the 17th. Would you help the kids with their homework for an hour? You can find out what it's really like here. Einfach mal sehen, was an der Basis so passiert. Reveal my ignorance. Oh, I doubt that. Oh, if only you knew. I'm not very good at mathematics. Oh, you'll manage. I do, and math isn't my strength. I try not to forget my roots, that I come from a rather humble background. My parents' home was very simple. I try to maintain that simple lifestyle. I do my own laundry, make my own breakfast, do my own shopping. I like to take care of these things myself, as everyone else does. This is the clothing you were asking about. The normal dress that is worn on official occasions. For a churchman, Cardinal Wölki holds strong political views. He argues that Christianity is inherently political. He gets involved in the city's social problems. He's media savvy and not intimidated by politicians. He's a good listener and also a good raconteur. His manner is direct and simple. I don't know about representing anything. Of course, it's part of my job to deal with politicians. When I arrived in Berlin, I couldn't imagine myself doing that. It was definitely not my métier, and probably still isn't. But I do my best because it's part of the job. November last year was the 75th anniversary of the pogrom the Nazis called Reichskristallnacht, the night of broken glass. In 1938, Hitler's henchmen torched synagogues and attacked Jewish businesses across Germany. The anniversary was also commemorated by Berlin's Christians. Mr. Mayor, Bishop Dröger, ladies and gentlemen, November the 9th is a day of remembrance. We call to mind the pogroms of November 1938. But we should also remember the silence that reigned over the whole of Germany and was not really broken even in the churches. We have to take responsibility for that and be ashamed. When asked if he considers himself progressive or conservative, Cardinal Wolke answers without hesitation, conservative. He likes to talk about the roots of his faith, the Christian message from which the Church lives. He agrees with Pope Francis that the Church should be poor, that it should serve the poor. It must proclaim love and social justice. The Church must always be ready to reform itself. And it must do so by comparing itself with its roots, the Gospel. Looking at the world in which we live, we have to try and see the present-day challenges. Where is God in this world? In the many social issues that concern us. Die vielen Fragen, die uns im sozialen Bereich 
beschäftigen. The church has to be the advocate of the poor and needy. That is the way it has to reform itself and change. It has to live more authentically, be more like the gospel. I think the Pope is a good example of this and challenging in the way he does it. Durch die Art, wie er das tut. Wilke knows the questions that need to be asked, but does he have answers to the church's problems? He believes the church needs to return to its roots to equip itself for the challenges of the present. The core of the church's identity, he says, is Jesus of Nazareth, his thought, his words, his actions. And that, says the Cardinal, is what should determine the Church's own thought, words and actions. He appears relaxed, and I think he is. He's a spiritual person and he's definitely good for Berlin. He stirred things up a bit. Of course, he still has to become familiar with the diocese and see how his wishes fit in with the circumstances here. But I think that will come with time, and he's open-minded. While visiting a Catholic school in Berlin, the Cardinal tries to speak the children's language. And what do you do most in your free time? Football. In the club? Yeah. Most of the time in Dortmund. We can learn from football. He tells them that soccer is a lesson in social behavior. A good player is always aware of what the other members of his team are doing at any moment. The Cardinal draws a bold parallel between Jesus and a soccer coach. Jesus, he tells the children, is like a coach who gives his team the right strategy for coexisting with others. Das ist mein Leib, der für euch hingegeben wird. With more than a billion members worldwide, the Catholic Church could be described as a multinational association. To survive as an institution, it has to have an organizational structure with a hierarchy and rules. But the Cardinal is adamant. Those are not the essentials. He says the church's main task is to bring people into contact with Christ. The foundation of the church is the celebration of the Eucharist. And it's not the priest, the bishop or the pope who breaks the bread. They simply make Christ, the head of the church, present. He is the one who proclaims his word who baptizes, confirms, and who breaks the bread and distributes it. When he gives himself to us, we become one with him, and also brothers and sisters, one body in him. Many German Catholics have turned their backs on religion. But the Church's will to reform, exemplified by Pope Francis and echoed by Berlin's Archbishop, is winning new respect. The message is clear. The Church must become an advocate of the poor and needy. She must identify with the poor. God is the mainstay of my life. I think we all want to be loved and accepted. But there is nobody who can give us unconditional support. 
dass auf der einen Seite jeder von uns ein paar wenige Menschen in seinem Leben hat. Auf der anderen Seite haben wir alle ein paar wenige Menschen, die wir glauben und hoffen, dass sie uns die Unterstützung geben, die wir brauchen. Dass sie das vorleben und dass das bei denen auch der Fall ist. Ähm, aber ich glaube, finally, das ist die letzte Geborgenheit. We can only find the security we're looking for in God. Und erhoffe ich für mich und mein Leben eben in Gott zu haben. <lacht> Thank <laughs> you.